It was a puzzle inside a puzzle. 180 degrees opposite what you would see in a conventional vehicle. A story of groundbreaking engineering. Accomplishing something that people thought was impossible. Backroom feuds. And they were butting heads and arguing. And heart-stopping drama. The whole planet was watching this thing happen. The only vehicle to land on another world. Nothing like it ever built before or since. How they built the Apollo Lunar Module. The Eagle has landed. At 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12. After the Soviets launched Sputnik, the space race was on. JFK promised the U.S. would land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth before the decade was out. Landing on the moon would be hard enough, but making it home to tell the tale, that was an engineering challenge for the ages. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. When President Kennedy committed us to go to the moon, it really uh, it did take people aback because is it even possible? So NASA kicked around ideas and there were three separate approaches to go to the moon. The first plan was called direct ascent. It's very easy to understand. You get in a rocket, you fly it to the moon. You land it on the moon, you fly it back to Earth, and you re-enter. Well, the problem is, is that that is simply not technologically possible. Direct ascent would require an impossibly large rocket. It's just too heavy because every pound you lift requires fuel, and then the fuel requires more fuel to lift that fuel, and it's a never-ending cycle. Instead of one massive rocket, NASA chief Werner von Braun suggested launching two smaller ones. He called this plan Earth Orbit Rendezvous. Earth Orbit Rendezvous where multiple rockets are launched, they rendezvous in Earth orbit, assemble a big rocket, and then that flies to the moon. To assemble the big rocket in space, they'd have to build a space station first. Werner von Braun was really hot on Earth orbit rendezvous because it kind of gave you a space station very early on in the program, but it would have taken longer and cost more. Von Braun was the undisputed king of rockets, but one NASA engineer dared to challenge him, John Hubolt. John Hubolt came up with the idea of lunar orbit rendezvous. Instead of flying directly to the moon, Hubolt suggested flying around it. As the main spaceship stayed in orbit, a smaller craft would undock from it and try to land on the moon. To get home, that craft would have to launch from the moon and somehow redock with the orbiting mothership. To most NASA engineers, it sounded just way too risky. John Hubold called himself a voice in the wilderness because he was for like years saying this is the only way that will get us to the moon if you want to land before 1970 and be able to afford to do it. It was a David and Goliath showdown. Hubold versus Von Braun. And they were butting heads and arguing. And finally, in Von Braun, to everyone's surprise, he flipped because he saw the light that if we want to land on the moon by 1970, Lunar Orbit Rendezvous was the way to go. Now, NASA had twin challenges invent one spacecraft to get near the moon and another one to reach the surface. We're gonna to have to create something that is so light that it's essentially a gossamer creation. And those two ships would have to meet up in space. We have to be able to rendezvous with another object in space and we have to be able to dock with it. I remember, we hadn't even rendezvoused in Earth orbit yet. So now you have the most monumental engineering challenge in the history of the world. Beth Page, New York headquarters of the Grumman Corporation. They began to imagine the lunar excursion module known as LEM. The head of the team was Tom Kelly. Tom Kelly uh, was the father of the lunar module. Now, there were about seven or 8,000 people working on the lunar module, but Tom Kelly was responsible for all of that, and it was not an easy task. Kelly had nothing to compare this to. He had to start with a blank canvas. Because it was only operating in space, and didn't need any wings, just needed rocket engines, needed light legs because it was going to be landing on the moon. So it was just its pure function defined its shape, very unique, uh, as nothing like it before or since have built that way. The entire period was a test period. Every day there was a new frontier to be explored, a problem would arise, and a solution would be found. And Kelly had a hard deadline. 
is this schedule is just going to be crazy. It's going to be basically 24 hours a day, nonstop, from now until the end of the decade. The clock was ticking, and we were determined to do it by the end of that decade or die trying. And I remember very clearly, I think anybody who was alive at the time does, I remember my parents waking me up, and we went down and we watched you guys land on the moon. No, which you didn't. Was, no, you didn't. What? Because uh, uh, there wasn't any television. There wasn't anybody taking a picture. You watched animation.